and you are in pain, whatever position you're in that is comfortable is okay. So let's talk about help with some latch problems. Are you in pain? It does take time to find a good breastfeeding position. So if you're feeling pain, gently break the baby's suction and try to relatch. Are you or your baby frustrated? Take a break. Sing a song while skin to skin or play a game. Does your baby have a weak suck or make only tiny suckling movements? Break the suction and try to relatch and talk to a doctor if this doesn't work. Could your baby be tongue-tied? Talk to your pediatrician. Now we'll watch a video on proper latching. Once the baby is latched, look for the following. A wide open mouth. The angle of the corner of the mouth should be greater than 130 to 150 degrees and the corners of the mouth don't touch. The baby's chin is touching the breast. The baby comes to the breast chin first. The head is slightly tilted back and the nose is not touching the breast. The latch is asymmetrical. This means that more of the areola can be seen above the baby's top lip than below the bottom lip. The lips are flanged out. For latching difficulties, try sandwiching the breast. Breastfeeding should not be painful. The tip of the nipple needs to be where the top of the mouth becomes soft. Run your tongue along the roof of your mouth to where it becomes softer to feel how far back this is. When the latch is not deep enough, the baby has the nipple at the front of the mouth, compressing the nipple between the tongue and the hard palate. This can be painful and may cause damage to the nipple as well as decrease the amount of milk flow to the baby. See the difference in the milk flow when the areola is compressed rather than just the nipple. To break the latch, place the finger into the corner of the baby's mouth and gently push the jaw down. How do you know when to switch breasts? Switch breasts when effective swallows are no longer observed to ensure that your baby gets more of the calorie-rich milk that is found closer to the end of the feed. Remember to pump immediately after feeds if breastfeeding is not yet established to protect the milk supply. To ensure your baby is feeding effectively, please see the video on breastfeeding and take assessment to learn how to know if your baby is drinking enough milk at the breast. How do you know if your baby is getting enough milk? If your baby is getting enough milk, your baby will be content and gain weight steadily after the first week of life. Your baby will lose a small amount of weight the first few days after birth. This is normal. After this though, your baby should gain two thirds to one ounce each day until about three months old. You'll know baby is getting enough milk if baby has clear or pale yellow urine, if your baby has regular bowel movements, your baby switches between short sleeping periods and awake periods, and your baby is satisfied after feeding. How you know your baby is getting enough milk? Here you'll see a chart that tells you how many wet and poopy diapers your baby should have per day, as well as the colors, so that you're not alarmed. Newborn stomach size. A lot of mothers are always afraid that they're not producing enough milk for their baby. So let's talk about the size and volume of a newborn stomach. On day one, a newborn stomach is only the size of a cherry, and that can only fit about a half a teaspoon of milk. On day three, baby's tummy is approximately the size of a walnut. So that's maybe a quarter three quarters to one ounce of milk. At one week old, baby's tummy is the size of an apricot. That's about one and a half to two ounces. 
And by one month, your baby's tummy is only the size of a large egg. So that could be two and a half to five ounces. Some common challenges. Breastfeeding can be challenging and very stressful at first. But remember, you are not alone. You have family, friends, and professionals to help you. Common challenges that come with breastfeeding. Low milk supply. Breastfeed as often as possible and let the baby decide when it is time to stop. Make sure your baby is latched on and positioned well. Use both breasts when feeding. Avoid formula, cereal, and pacifiers. And of course, talk to your doctors. Cluster feeding. What is this? Cluster feeding is when it feels like your baby is feeding nonstop. It's caused by growth spurts, slow milk flow, fluctuation of hormones, and cluster feeding can seem never ending. And when your baby fussily and feeding frequently, it's easy to think that there may not be enough milk or something might be wrong. However, cluster feeding is completely normal, and most babies will grow through that phase in the early months. Common challenges. The number one challenge is sore nipples. Improper latch can lead to sore nipples. Breastfeeding should be comfortable and it should not hurt. Your own breast milk has healing properties. You can express some and gently rub it on your nipples. Do not delay feedings because this can cause more pain as well as harm your milk supply. Get help from a lactation consultant. Change positions each time you breastfeed. Avoid harsh soaps and ointments. And don't wear bras or clothing that is too tight. Some remedies for sore nipples. Some remedies for sore nipples include applying freshly expressed milk, warm compresses, medical grade 100% lanolin, changing your nursing pads frequently, and just letting your breasts air out and breathe. Ask a medical professional before using any creams, hydrogel pads, or nipple shields other than the medical grade 100% lanolin. Some common challenges. Engorgement is when breasts becomes hard and painful. And this is usually caused by milk buildup. Symptoms of breast engorgement include swelling, tenderness, warmth, redness, hard breasts, and flat nipples. Common causes of engorgement are not breastfeeding enough, waiting too long between nursing or pumping, fluctuation in hormones, changes in yours and baby's schedule, and overabundant milk supply. Remember, unresolved engorgement can cause fever or infection, and then you must consult with your doctor. Here are some tips to help with engorgement. Many mothers notice engorgement or overfilled breasts at some point or the other while they're breastfeeding their baby. And it's especially common to experience when your baby's first born and you're just starting to, to make milk. So for the first couple of days, you make colostrum and then two to five days later, your milk comes in and sometimes it comes in with a vengeance and all of a sudden you feel really full and it can be painful and, and very uncomfortable. So um, normally, your milk supply will, will even out and start to, you know, work well with your baby's uh, demand. So it's kind of a supply and demand type of function. But until then, if you feel engorgement, there are a few things you can do to relieve it. If you're nursing your baby on demand, this will usually help to self-regulate. And most young babies want to eat every two to three hours and sometimes even every hour. So basically, the more often your breasts are emptied, the more relief you're, you'll feel. But at this, on the same hand, the more you nurse, the more milk you're your body will probably produce. And so this is why it's good to go off your baby's cues because then you'll make what your baby needs and hopefully not much more. But if you are making more than your baby needs and you find that you're still full after feedings, you'll probably have to either manually express the milk or pump it off. So have a good pump available in case you need to. And if you don't, you can manually express the milk by gently massaging from the armpit down towards the nipple. And you can also try using heat prior to nursing your baby or pumping milk off. And this will also help to relax things and help you to get the milk out. 
um, take a warm shower and then feed your baby or use a warm compress. If this isn't helping, then you might want to use ice packs between feedings. And sometimes mothers even resort to using cabbage leaves. Cabbage leaves, for whatever reason, have been shown to reduce engorgement and help with the discomfort that comes along with it. Um, of course, there's red cabbage and green cabbage, and they both work the same, but green is probably less likely to dye or stain your clothes. So just get a whole leaf and place it inside your bra next to your skin and leave it there till it wilts and then replace it with a cool one. One other thing you can try is adjusting your baby's position while you nurse because sometimes babies are sucking really effectively from one part of the breast but not effectively emptying other areas of the breast. So by switching up the position um, and aiming their nose in different areas around the breast, that can help to empty different areas that might not be emptied as well. So if you feel like there's a certain point that's, that's fuller than others, aim your baby's no nose towards that. If these things aren't helping, you might start to notice that you have a hard lump or a red tender area, and this may be a clogged duct. So do what you can, again, to continue nursing in spite of the pain. Use warm compresses or, sh or a hot shower before nursing to try to unclog the duct. You can gently massage it. And then if at any point you notice that you develop a fever or have signs of sickness like the chills and then you're really hot, you're really cold, um, you may have mastitis, and that requires treatment. So call your doctor as soon as possible if you notice that. I hope these suggestions help you, and if you have any other questions in the future for me, feel free to ask them on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash intermountainmoms and recommend us to your friends and family too.